My name is David Zetland. I am an economist. That's been my big goal in life. Uh, what do economists do, you might ask. Actually, you're probably not asking. I'm asking for you. But anyway, what do economists do? <laughs> economists are, the, the reason I say that is because uh, most people don't even understand the, what we're supposed to do let alone what we do. They think, oh, you're an accountant, or you talk about money all the time. But what economists do is they talk about decisions. They talk about decisions, uh, how we decide between two items on a menu or two different pieces of clothing in our wardrobe. And those decisions are always about trying to uh, make the best choice for ourselves. And uh, I've been doing economics for my whole life, and I enjoy it a lot. And uh, when I was growing up in California, I spent some time working in various industries, uh, technology, real estate, and so on. And then I uh, went traveling for many years to, uh, well, now I'm up to about 90 countries. And in those travels, I met lots of different people and saw lots of different things. So uh, I ended up going to, to graduate school and getting a PhD because I like talking about ideas. And I've written this book because uh, I think these ideas are, are interesting to other people, and I want to share those ideas with you. So the book has a structure which is uh, similar to my earlier book, and uh, the structure is broken in two parts. And I'll show you here in the table of contents. There's a, about 11 chapters. It's an introduction plus uh, five chapters in the first part and five chapters in the second part. And the structure is uh, based on the, the uses of water, but also the way that we need, need to manage water. So part one is about economic uses of water. Uh, such as water for our drinking water, our tap water, uh, water for irrigation for farmers, water for businesses, bottled water. And part two is about the social uses of water and the social decisions we make that affect water use. So social uses are environmental water flows, those water flows benefit all of us, uh, or infrastructure uh, is another social uh, decision uh, process, or it's a, it's a, it's a, the infrastructure decisions we make as a society, they don't just affect the way we uh, live in terms of our cities, but they also affect the way we move water around. So part two is all about the social uh, um, dimensions of water. And uh, the 11 chapters, the first chapter is an introduction, but the 11 chapters uh, cover pieces of the water puzzle so that you can put them all together to make a whole. And I did that uh, uh, intentionally so that people who understand a lot about one part of water will be able to learn more about other parts of water and how they relate to each other. And the structure of part one, part two, makes it possible for you to read up on uh, a certain number of types of uses of water and then uh, think about those separately before you look at other types of uses of water. So they, they fit together in a cumulative way, but they also let you gradually build towards uh, a, a greater understanding of how we use water. Why should you read this book? Uh, you should read this book because uh, it's the summary of 10 years of my knowledge. Ten years of wisdom in 110 pages. Um, the reason you should read this book is because uh, I think it presents a really complete version of water uses uh, from an economic perspective and from a political perspective. And uh, you might know quite a bit about uh, water in your own life. You might know quite a bit about water because of your work. Um, but not a lot of people think about water from an, ec uh, from an economic perspective. They don't think about water as an economic good the same way we think about oil or, or gasoline or um, even art as an economic good. So uh, I'm bringing a different perspective to this discussion, which uh, is new for a lot of people. And the other reason that you would want to read this book is because I've spent 10 years, more or less, talking to people from all, all sides of the water debate, to all types of water users, activists, different continents, different countries. And in those 10 years and in the, the 5,000 blog posts on my blog um, that I've been doing for six years and the various talks and conversations, I've talked to so many people that I've gotten a reasonable idea of how different people think and also how different ideas can fit within what people think. So um, the book gives you a shortcut towards those 10 years of experience. And it'll give you some new ideas. Uh, it'll give you some ideas you may not like. Uh, it'll give you some ideas that maybe you like a lot. Uh, and in that sense, it's going to be something that'll help you understand more about how water flows in our lives 
and um, it'll make it easier for you to, to talk about water as a citizen, uh, to, to use water as a consumer, uh, and to discuss and, and, and uh, uh, participate in the management of water, which is becoming more and more important as we have less and less of it available to people around the world. That's the problem with water scarcity. We need to figure out how to manage it. The value of water depends on who you are. Uh, I have one value of water for swimming. You have a totally different value of water. Say you like swimming a lot or you like swimming in salt water. You don't like swimming at all. Uh, I have a value of water that changes depending on how much water I've drunk. If I'm really thirsty, the water is highly valuable to me. My value of water might change from day to day or activity to activity. It might change uh, depending on who I'm with. Uh, and that same thing is true with you and your values of water. So what we know is that there's a lot of different values of water. What we also should know from that is that, number one, we need to reconcile those different values. And number two, it's very difficult to do that in any kind of um, discussion way, any kind of uh, my value versus your value kind of compromise. Uh, and from a, what does this mean is that you and I might be talking about totally different values for the same water. We, we, not, we may not know that. So the important thing is to know that we have different values. Then you have to figure out a way of reconciling those values. And uh, in the book, I talk about that in a, in a much bigger, more, uh, well, in a, in a much more defined sense, actually, uh, in the way that, for example, two different farmers who have different values of water uh, might uh, trade water in a market. And one will sell the water to the other because uh, one's value is different than another. In the same way, we can talk about the value of water for ho homes and households. And, People have the use of water in their washing machines, or they have the use of water uh, for drinking or for cooking, uh, but then maybe they want to use the water outside for irrigation on their lawns. And some people will want lawns because they think it's worth spending the money on, other people's might not. But the important part of this is that if water is being mismanaged and someone's using it on their lawn uh, in the sense that they're using too much water because we're not talking about water being scarce, then the water on the lawn which has a value to one person as a private good, a private lawn, they're a private lawn, uh, might actually mean less water in the environment, which affects everybody. So it's really important to talk about the value of water and find ways of reconciling those values. I chose the title, Living with Water Scarcity, which is a little bit underwater, as you can see. I chose the title because I wanted to emphasize the way that we need to live with water scarcity, as opposed to uh, die with water scarcity. And uh, to bring, um, to use those words uh, means to, to talk about the subject that way. Most of the time the newspapers talk about water crisis, water shortage, uh, water wars, and I wanted to kind of normalize the idea and say, look, we can live with water scarcity, likely live with scarcity of land, uh, scarcity of uh, restaurant seats, uh, scarcity of anything else. So the book is about how we can do that.